How's it y'all? Welcome to today's video. So we are going to be going from a helicoil like this to a time cert like this. So I'll explain to you the differences. I'll explain to you why the helicoil is not going to work on the application anymore and why the time cert has to be done. Never done a time cert before. So Hopefully this goes well, and hopefully you guys learned something, because I know it's, I know I'm gonna be learning something. That's definitely gonna happen. And then I also got this tool that I will be showing you what it does, and well, using it later on in the video to install the time certs. So hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's get into it. Start the intro. I uh, had to basically take the clutch off um, and the reason why I did was because one of you guys actually commented on the last video I made and it came to my attention that well I put <clears throat> I put the clutch disc on wrong unfortunately which I usually don't do it usually doesn't happen but I, I did it it went on wrong and I watched the footage back just because I wasn't sure if I did or not and sure enough I did uh, put it on wrong which I'm really really glad that I'm able to go back in my videos to watch and verify these things so that being said um, we have to fix something now um, because I was using, like you saw in my last video, I was using these thread insert coils. So, by the way, if you guys already know the difference between a Ely coil and a time cert, uh, I will put a time stamp right here uh, of when the explanation is over if you just want to see me go through the whole process of getting these in and putting the clutch up. If you want to go ahead and skip to that, no problem at all. For the rest of you, Let's get into this. So I was using these thread insert coils and not that these are bad by any means. They, they usually are one time use. Uh, the only problem with these right now that I'm having is that as soon as you start threading a bolt in, right, the coil threads start to expand. So they start to split apart because they're trying to make room for the threads of the bolt, right? So this works well. The only problem is I've taken the clutch off so many times by this point that these have all stretched in the flywheel and would be compressed fully all the way and they will never look like that again once you stretch them. So. With that long explanation out of the way, we have decided to get these. So, got this kit right here. For those that don't know, um, these are time certs, and I didn't know what they were until I got informed by someone at work that these are really, really nice for, for example, uses of your spark plug threads going out that absolutely sucks um, so these would be a great option for that because they bond with the metal and just like the thread inserts the difference though with these is that they are one solid piece they do not have any they're not spring they're not they're not metal tubing or small metal tubing that's been you know formed into a repair kit or a heli coil as people say and they are solid so it's one solid piece it doesn't you know it doesn't spring back and forth so these are different though in a sense of installation so you have your drill bit up here drilling the, um, the hole out and you have your tap thankfully this kit came with the right tap for the outside 
of these threads, which this tab is a M10 by 125. My other one was an M10 by one. This is going to fit correctly. And then this is kind of the main difference between the, between the two. This right here. So this is going to be a countersink. And with the countersink, if you guys can see on this, there is a little lip. So the countersink is for that little lip so it'll recess all the way and it gives you the best flush insulation. It gives you the best flush fit for these time certs to go into the block and be part of the block at this point, at that point. And so you use all of these in order. And so you'd use that to, to countersink the hole. And then this is one of the coolest things that there is. So this right here, it has the same threads and you put it on your uh, tap insert. By the way, all of these tools, the tap and the countersink, both have the quarter inch um, fitting on the end. So you can put it in your tap and spin it so you use the tool as you need it. So the cool thing about this though, this lip right here, is I'm actually just noticing that it has a little bit of a lip so it's sloped. So the cool thing about this is once you push, or once you thread the time start all the way in and it's flush, there is this jet or separation uh, spacer right here. And you undo that and what that's gonna do is it's actually going to take this um, thread out of the time cert because it's going to, you're, you're spinning, you're spinning this after you put it in and it's pretty much going to push the threads out of the tool to the time cert and you can just take it out. So really, really cool. This can be really scary if um, you don't know how to use it, which this is my first time using it too. So I will show you every single step I do. There's also a tool I got because I'm using the taps and the dies so much. This is only going to work for the taps um, and the, well, it'll help with countersink too and the, uh, the thread installer for the time cert. But this right here is going to be 3 8 socket right there. And then it's going to have a twist for, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's these arms in there. So these arms are going to be exactly matched up to this right here. So the end piece right here, quarter inch, is gonna go right into this right here, like that. And then you just tighten it on and then from there you can use a ratchet, which, uh, which is nice because then you can have a lot more space in there. Uh, instead of having the, like the T that comes out here that connects to the tap, you'll be able to put a 3 8 on it, ratchet it, and you'll have a little bit more leverage to uh, spin the tap and make it so that it can do its job and not have to be fighting it. So um, I got all of this on Amazon for a really, really good price. So. If you guys want to, I'll leave the links down below for this and the time cert. The time cert, most of the time, if you already know what size you need, um, like say M10 by 125 or whatever the case may be, uh, you can go onto Amazon and just put the size you need into the search bar and it will come out with more time cert options, which is really cool. So if you guys need that, go ahead and do it. Um, but we're gonna be installing this today, so I'm really excited about that and showing you guys how to uh, install those. So I usually don't use this camera for this type of stuff, but I figured this was really important with the installation of these time certs that I'd want to talk you guys through it a little bit. Uh, so if you guys do appreciate that, go down to the bottom of this video, give it a like, and comment something let me know let me know that you guys are uh, appreciative that i'm doing this for you because uh anyway so we have the wrench on the adapter here so we have it on the adapter and then we have the tap so went ahead and i drilled the threads out of this hole already so the most important part of why this is amazing right here like this whole device is because not only do you have to like line it up right, but getting this started in the hole is the most crucial part. And the reason why is because 
if for example I didn't have it level which the engine is tilted forward because there's no weight on the transmission so all the weight is on the uh, going forward so to compensate for that you have to make sure that this tap is going straight in the hole and the most important part is getting it started which this really helps a lot um, taking your time on this is crucial because as soon as you get it nice and flush in here where you have a couple of the uh, threaded like the re-threads down into the hole so that's actually th threading the uh, the hole and making the threads it's easier because you can just start you know cranking on this and it will start going in nice and slowly which it's also really neat because you can also back it up which is really important because a lot of the times the threads I don't know if you just saw all those threads coming out the threads because it's biting into the wall and it's creating those threads you need to basically take those um, little bits and pieces of uh, cutaway material that it's cutting into to create the threads you need to take those out because if not you're gonna be fighting with those um, the entire time instead of just backing it up and making it so that those mater the material the excess material falls out of the hole and it's just gonna be an overall cleaner and nicer experience so as you can see it's getting easier for me to turn it right because we've already established the threads in so it's super crucial to make sure that everything lines up really nicely so that when you start cranking down on it and making those threads happen it'll create nice threads that aren't going to be uh, cross threading or diagonal because as soon as you put the bolt in and it's you know not flush that's going to make it so that the pressure uh, on the pressure plate is not going to be evenly in. Um, it's not super important, but knowing how to do this the correct way um, right off the bat is definitely the way to go. Because if you don't know how to do it correctly, and if you you know start to you know put it in wrong, um, it's just going to make everything a lot more complicated. So uh, I will go ahead since this one was already pretty much. Uh, halfway done by the time I started filming because I forgot to film about it um, I will go ahead and show you on the next one that is up here so I will finish this off real quick for you guys and I will get on to the next one so I'll show you the whole process start the threads and then as soon as that is nice and or as soon as that's nice and engaged let's say you can go ahead and start spinning it and getting the teeth to bite. The start is definitely the most time consuming because you need to make sure everything's lined up right because then the once it bites you're off to the races. But getting it to bite right off the bat is definitely the most crucial part and the part where you should really put most of your concentration. All right, so now that that one's tapped all the way through, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all retap all of the threads to the tap size that we're using. I'll probably show you guys the bevel as well because I've never done that. So I want to show you guys how it gets done. Cool. That's exactly how I wanted it to be. So that's perfect. I, for any of you guys wondering why I'm pulsating, that's the reason why. So you can control the depth a lot easier, which makes it nice, a nice smooth finish. Sweet. So all of those are nice and bezeled. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the time certs in. I'm gonna get them all Loctited, so 
go ahead and start with one and go from there. Now it's gonna do that a couple more times. So real quick, <laughs> this is really cool. So what I find really cool about the installation tool right here is it has this little space right here that is able to come off. But the cool thing about it is if I get it tight enough, which I might not be able to, it kind of sits like not as flush. So it's not flush on the inside of it if you can see right there it's kind of like offset the cool thing about that is the outside of it that goes to the bolt that's flush so that it can get a nice flushed hold onto the insert and then as you're as you're actually you know threading it in when you go to release it this spacer pretty much gives you the gap you need to make it so that you can pull the tool out without without being engaged with the thread search so basically it makes it so that you can like you can take this tool out uh without having to take the time search out so really really cool i actually didn't realize that until this fell off um off camera and i had to put it back on and i guess i didn't realize that one side had to be flat and the other side has to have that uh uneven cut in it uh, because I ended up putting a thread shirt in and had to take it out. I was taking the thread shirt out with the tool and then I had to release the tool from the thread shirt which wasn't difficult um, but yeah this is on one way and if you guys ever do time search just make sure that if you can feel the space in between or the gap or if it's just not like super tight it, it's it's for a reason so yeah just just in case just the more you know type of thing. So we already got most of this uh, done. Thank you. 
don't have to torque these all the way down, just have to get them nice and snug where the ratchet can't go anymore. If you're using a longer, like a long ratchet with more uh, leverage on it, just be careful. Don't don't think that you have to put so much pressure on these because these just need to these just need to stay on. They don't need to be torqued down or anything like that because you don't want to make the 30 minute job four and a half hours or the four and a half hour job three days, so to speak. So just get them nice and taunt in there so it doesn't move anymore. Cool. And then just back off, back them off. All right, sounds good. When you guys see me next, we'll be putting on the clutch. The uh, Loctite has definitely had time to dry up and cure. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to get the clutch on and get it mounted so that tomorrow we can focus on getting all of the transmission and everything on, given the clutch wants to go in, which there shouldn't be any reason why it won't. So I went ahead and went to all the bolts, took them out, locked tight to them, and I'm torquing them down now. I did all the other ones. This is the last bolt and I forgot to uh, press record. So I'm going to go ahead and do this last one for you guys so you guys know that I did every single one of them just for accountability purposes. So I torqued them all down to 20 foot pounds. Um, a buddy of mine that did the same swap, he told me to do 10, but I just wanted to make sure. And I'm gonna go ahead, go around all nine of them with a torque wrench just to make sure that they're all torqued. Because if they're torqued already and it clicks without me having to do anything, that means it's torqued or it's I uh, already locked tight them. But if not, like this one, the last thing you want is a weak link. Oh. 
Last video I marked them all with the green marker just to make sure I torqued them all. That green marker has since gone dry so I can't use it anymore but I will definitely get green marker for the future but I did mark all of them already so on the flywheel so and the line on most of them line up slightly so as long as it doesn't move from there we are good to go oh yeah those are those are nice nice and firmly in there i don't think i've had such a good tight feeling tightening these things tightening these bolts since the first time i put the bolts in and you already know after all that's done whoo it didn't have that nice pop to it but everything is in now the bolts feel firm like they feel like they're not gonna move every single bolt i torqued to 20 foot pounds i can't be happier honestly we got the clutch disc properly installed and we popped the clutch alignment tool out so everything is aligned and I know now for a fact that the spline, the input shaft on the transmission was not fully engaging in the spline because the clutch plate, when it was reversed, the splines were farther away from the input shaft. So now that they are closer to the input shaft because it's installed the right way, it's, uh, it's all going to go nice. So I'm really excited. And... Oh. We're going to go ahead and continue this in the morning. So tomorrow the plan is to get the transmission in, get everything else put back to where it needed to be, needs to be. Um, I just wanted to get the clutch bolts in tonight so that tomorrow it's a cruise uh, to the final completion of putting the transmission in and putting everything back to where it is needing to go. So really, really stoked on those time certs. I'm really, really happy that they worked out. So I'll see you guys in the morning. It is the next day, guys. And so I am basically just going to get everything, all the transmission stuff and everything in off camera just because I feel like you guys have seen me put it in, pull it out, push it, uh, put it in over and over again that honestly it would just be like repetitive content which I don't really want to do and then I'm actually going to uh, show you guys the bleeding process in the next video uh, just because I kind of want a video on its own regarding the bleeding process of the clutch because the clutch on this is not just different but because there's so many different components clutch master is from a Land Cruiser and then the lines are made custom made that I went down to a hydraulic shop and got made as well as the throw bearing is a Chevy Camaro Pontiac G8 I think um, it's one of those throw bearings so it's internal throw bearing because of the just lengthy uh, process of bleeding the throw bearing on this particular setup I'm gonna go ahead and do a whole never there video on it so that's gonna mark the end of this episode I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the information that you guys learned and you guys did definitely go down in the comments and let me know like if it helped you if it didn't the whole idea of my channel is to help you guys learn as well as learning myself because I have no idea what I'm doing the concept I have is that every single time I do something new on this channel it's gonna help me in the long run with my business you know just because I have done it already on, on a, my personal car and doing it on a personal car and making it work and, and doing it right on my personal car it transitions into working other, on other people's cars that have the exact same issue or something related. So it's kind of just one of those uh, things we mark up to experience. So anyways, that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. And never forget guys, always stay positive and stay true to who you are. Till next episode, see you guys soon. Shoots!